Okay, let's take a look at our humerus, okay? First, let's orient ourselves to position. On the anterior aspect of the humerus, on the proximal epiphysis, I have these two raised projections. Those are my tubercles. And if I look at the distal epiphysis, you'll see on the posterior aspect, I have this big giant depression there for the olecranon process to fit into. So this is posterior with the big depression. This is anterior now with these two raised projections, okay? So if this is now anatomical position, you're looking at a left humerus. So let's start with the proximal end. I've got two raised bumps we refer to as tubercles. The greater tubercle is more proximal and lateral. The lesser tubercle is more distal and medial. And right in between those two tubercles, I have a sulcus or a depression. We call that area between the two tubercles the intertubercular groove, right? Inter because it's between. The head of the humerus is pretty obvious. This big, nice, rounded area that's going to articulate the glenoid fossa of the scapula. And then the humerus has two necks associated with it. The anatomical neck is right where you would expect the neck to be, right behind or underneath the head. Okay? But the humerus has an additional neck that wraps around the proximal metaphysis, and we call that the surgical neck. Okay? So everything on the proximal epiphysis, greater tubercle, lesser tubercle, intertubercular groove. This is my head, my anatomical neck, and my surgical neck. When we look at the shaft of the humerus, or the diaphysis, on the lateral aspect, it takes up almost the whole middle third of the bone, is a big kind of roughened area. And that is my deltoid tuberosity. Okay, The deltoid tuberosity is for the insertion of the deltoid muscle. If I look down at the distal epiphysis, this is where I have my condyles and my epicondyles. Now with the humerus, the condyles have a special name. This rounded lateral condyle has a special name we refer to as the capitulum. Okay? Since this is lateral, it's going to articulate with the lateral forearm bone, which is the radius. So the way I remember the capitulum is to say that the cap sits on the head, okay, the head of the radius. If I look at the medial condyle, it's spool-shaped or pulley-shaped. It has kind of two raised areas with a depression in the center. This is your trochlea, okay? So the medial condyle is called the trochlea. Now if I just go proximally to the two condyles, I have my epicondyles. This would be my lateral epicondyle. This, over here, would be my medial epicondyle, okay? On the front, I have a shallow little depression right there. That depression is my coronoid fossa, and that's going to receive the coronoid process of the ulna. If I turn this over and look at the posterior aspect, I have a bigger, larger uh, depression in the back. That's my olecranon fossa, which is going to receive my olecranon process of the ulna. Okay? There's your humerus.